would like to thank Pastor Bob for the opportunity to share this morning on the topic of peace. One particular scripture that's meant a lot to me this year has been Philippians 4, verses 6 and 7. Be anxious for nothing, but by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This scripture became a viable part of my daily life this year. By way of prayer, God helped me overcome many trials and struggles. In the face of breast surgery, death of a spouse, constant pain, colon cancer, and travels. God, by the way of prayer, carried me through victoriously. And a part of that was the church as well. All the prayer warriors here were a part of that, and you're all a part of that, that success story. The challenges I overcame were emotional, physical, financial, legal, and medical. The year started for me January 7th with a surgery for an almost seven centimeter tumor that had grown aggressively without my knowing it until two days before my mammogram in uh, November. David, my husband's conditions, required my attention, and I hadn't even noticed. The day of surgery, he was there to support me until he had to leave to get one of his many blood transfusions because of his myelofibrosis that day. I stayed there that night and went home the next day. And as I did, I'd take my first shower afterward, my hair started falling out. My husband was then diagnosed within days with COVID then went to the hospital for five days. Got pneumonia, which led to double pneumonia. And several hospitalizations before March, when he went back in the hospital, after three days where he couldn't sleep, I called the ambulance, according to home health care's direction. And he spent the next six days there until the doctors told us they could no longer do anything more for him. And they recommended hospice. That night, I went home. Before I went to bed at 9.30, I called ICU, and I wanted to talk to him, see how he's doing. What I didn't know was that he could no longer speak at that point. The CO2 in his body had caused brain damage, and he could just speak in gibberish. He was very agitated, the nurse said. But as I spoke to him and just told him, honey, I love you. Everything's going to be all right. Just go to sleep. I know you're tired. Everything's, there's nothing to worry about. I'll see you in the morning. The nurse said, wow, that was amazing. Your voice has a very calming effect on him. I went back to bed. At 11 o'clock, God woke me up again. And I did the very same thing with the very same result. And again at 110. And after that 110 interaction, she gave him a sedative that was hospice strength, and he slept through the night until the next morning when they gave Bob and I a call at home, Bob, his brother, and told us that we, they did not think he was going to make it to hospice that day. We called his daughters, who had just come back in his life, which was a miracle in itself after 10 years of absence, and were part of his life those five days and beyond and through the funeral. And have been a great help. We all came in there and had about 24 minutes together with him until he peacefully passed after we prayed, prayed with him. And one of the greatest blessings of my life to this point is knowing that we helped him pass peacefully. The funeral was wonderful here, and everybody here was part of that. I still am very thankful. David would have been proud for the honor that he was given. After that, Two weeks later, I began six weeks of physical therapy in the aftermath of my breast surgery, followed by 16 rounds of radiation. And during that time, I was also suffering from pains in my abdomen, which were constant 
uh, 24-7 to the point I'd had to take hydrocodone with maximum dose for 24-7. And uh, they never uh, found why that was happening until September when a CT indicated I had colon cancer once again. I started this chemotherapy for that. And during that time, I also, in September, got a letter from my high school announcing my 50th high school reunion, which I dearly uh, wanted to go to. And uh, I had the opportunity to do that. But I, I told God first that this pain has got to go. So I made that known to the pastor and the prayer warriors here, and they helped pray. And in two weeks, that, prayer, that, that pain was gone. And I was able to go, traveled by myself successfully. First trip I'd taken in three years out of town and had a great time with family and, and uh, my friends. I came back and continued with my chemotherapy. And at this point in time, I'm down to one more before the end of the year. And then in January, I'll see my doctor. And my prayer and belief is that I will get a clean bill of health. God has been with me every step of the way. And as I said, the prayer warriors of this church are a big part of that. Another scripture that's been very instrumental in my life has been Isaiah 26, 3, which says, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. That's absolutely true. And I want to thank each and every one of you for being a part of my journey. But most of all, I give all the glory and praise and honor to God and his son, Jesus Christ, who is the Prince of Peace. God bless you. I love you. Thank you. Amen. Would you stand with me, please? We're going to pray with Agnes. I tell you, if you ever get discouraged or you feel like you're running out of gas, call Agnes and spend an hour with her, and she'll get you all charged up again. Amazing, amazing. Uh, I'm just you're, you're just, you're a blessing to us, and, and it's awesome just to be able to walk with you. Just extend your hand this way, would you, Father? We thank you for this wonderful story. It is a story of peace and redemption. It is a story of your comfort and power. And Lord, you told us in this life that we would have trouble, but you would give us peace and we could be of good cheer because you have overcome the world. And when I read that verse, I think of Agnes. And I thank you for the encouragement she brings to me. And I pray your continual blessing upon her this this, this doctor appointment that's coming up the first of the year, it's been a long journey. And Lord, we just, Lord, we're just putting our confidence in you and we're putting our trust in you. And I thank you for the peace that you have given to Agnes. And I, I pray of this overflow out of her life and that Lord, by her own confession today, it is perfect peace. It is complete in every way. And it guards her heart and her mind. And I pray that peace over this congregation as well. As we continue to walk our lives together, we give you all the glory in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And everybody said, Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you.